Hello, hello, hello! It has been a while since I did one of these, but I felt the desire to come back and do one because, well, they seem to get more views than the Nuzlocke, and so I was like, if I ever want to get into earning money, I gotta get views. So, yeah, basically, I'm doing this for views. <laughs> Um, because people like to argue with my opinions, even when I'm the right one. So, here we go. I am going to do every dark type Pokemon. So, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> um, starting off, Alolan Rattata. An A tier Pokemon. Uh, Rattata itself is like a B to C tier. Oh, there's not meant to be an F here. Uh, Rattata itself is like B to C tier, but Alolan Rattata... A tier. It's a better color scheme. The black with the red eyes and the dark brown fur. Way better. Also, the little spikes added and the little mustache do, they really do add to the design. And I think Rattata works better on two feet than four. So, you know, you can't see it in this uh, Kensu Gamori art, but it does look better on two feet, especially with this certain design. So, I think Alolan Rattata is an A tier. Alolan Rattata Kate better color scheme and it looks better technically but I would ra regular Raticate is B tier Alolan Raticate is C tier just because the face the big cheeks and the giant teeth clanging together like that don't work as well as they did on Raticate like regular one the color's better for sure and I do like the fuzziness of it but just regular Raticate puts it up well Overtakes it by like a whole tier. So C tier, just because I don't really hate it. But they could have done much better with this. Um, Alolan Meowth. I think Alolan Meowth is probably the best Meowth form. Cantonian and Galarian Meowth. They're kind of meh. Well, regular Meowth is fine. Uh, and Galarian Meowth is also fine. But Alolan Meowth... It's got personality, it's not got blank eyes, it is still realistically a first stage form, it's not too dull, it's not too busy. I quite like it. And it's a nice colour, you know? I think the colour does do a lot for it. And also dark type. Dark's one of my favourite types, so it helps. Uh, Alolan Persian. I would be absolutely rinsed in the comments if Alolan Persian was not in the D tier. Um, I get why. Its head is so circular because it's based off of round-faced cats, like the British short hair and whatever. But it just doesn't work when you make it a circle. You know, you've got to make it rounded. The whole point of regular Persian is that it's, well, it's quite sleek. It's quite slim. This Persian is exactly the same body shape with a big fat head. You need to change more and Dull down the head roundness a bit. Also, the ears look a bit off. But other than that, it's just quite crap. The only good thing is the blue gem and the skin color is uh, still good, like regular Meowth. But yeah, whatever. It's not that great. Uh, Alolan Grimer. I'd say it's an in like a, a, an above regular Grimer. Regular Grimer is just a big purple spot, like pile of sludge. Not much going on for it, but Alolan Grimer... It's a cool looking Pokemon with a fun color scheme and a good good design. Well, like a good premise. Like the deck entries about it. Pretty fun and pretty good. Pretty cool. And yeah, I've used one on my team and he was amazing. Very helpful uh, to have a poison dark Pokemon. Uh, unless, obviously, you're fighting a fucking ground type or anything like that. But... Regular Grimer would also be in B, but it would just be in the lower part of B. Uh, Alolan Muck is a top tier Pokemon. It They took regular Muck and they did everything they should have done to it. They should have given it more colors and they gave it more design details. Uh, hence the, the, the little rocks here. But they also simulate teeth and claws despite just being rocks. And like little, I think they're like poisonous things. Like if you, if one falls out, a bunch of poison spills out. But point is, I love this Pokemon, and it was so much fun to use. Just because, well, it's poison dark type. Poison typing, always fun to use, just to annoy. Well, I mean, they're AI, so they can't really get annoyed, but it's fun to do it anyway. Uh, and dark type, just very useful, you know, getting psychics and whatnot. But yeah, this one, 
it's perfect and i love the color choices they really nailed it and yeah so this is why i like alola pretty decent <laughs> obviously unless they're c or d tier uh mega gyarados um i don't find myself particularly caring about gyarados but it's cool that you know the thing that misty saw looks like mega gyarados blah 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 and it, it it makes more sense as a water type than regular Gyarados, I'll tell you that much. But Water Dark fits better than Water Flying, so I'll put it here. Do I prefer it over regular Gyarados? I think so, just because it's, the thickness of its neck makes the hugeness of its mouth look less off-scale. So I really like this. Uh, and by really like this, I mean I'm neutral and I don't have a particular opinion about it. Uh, so I lied to you, basically. Um... <clears throat> Uh, Galarian Moltres is the ultimate bird of, um, okay, so I know it's not a Cantonian legendary bird, and they're technically all Galarian legendary birds. Are they even alternate variants? I don't know. There's still no confirmation on that, but we assume not. So basically, basically what I'm saying is, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres, of all six of those birds, including the variants, this is the best one. Why? Because regular Moltres, is, his wings are too thin. But Galarian Moltres, his wings are part of the fire slash darkness. They merge into it slowly instead of looking like a chicken. He looks like a chicken, but he looks like an evil chicken. And his wings aren't off center, like off scale. They don't look too thin. I love it. And the color scheme is cool. And the idea that it's emitting darkness and evil, that's fucking badass. I love that. So, Galarian Moltres, S tier, I cannot hate it that much anyway. It's just fun as well, and it has a really good shiny, way better than regular Moltres looks in general. Uh, Umbreon, S tier, best evolution, best shiny evolution, one of the best shinies, period. Uh, the red eyes on the black body, red eyes on a black body usually results in a decent Pokemon, uh, no matter what you do after that. And the yellow accents on the rings, just really add up to a classic Pokemon with so many fans and it's one of those that you you can't really hate you can hate it but like the only reason you can hate Pokemon like this is like oh it's it's too bland or people like it too much you know like Ditto the only reason you can hate Ditto is because it's too basic other than that there's nothing to hate it's got perfect design on it and I love it to death and it will probably forever be my favorite evolution. Uh, Murkrow. Hmm. It should never have been as... If it wasn't... If it came with Honchkrow, it might be an S tier. But since it was just Murkrow in Gen 2 and 3, I can't give it S tier because it was too weak. But I love the beak, the beak sharpness, like the jaggedness of it. Pretty fun. The hat hair thing going on. I like it. The fact that its tail looks like a broomstick perfect this is a well-designed pokemon lots of thought put into the design and the dark blue with the red eyes still works uh dark blue just as good as black in my eyes like like dark gray as well but also i really like crows crows are a good bird so a tier for murkrow lovely pokemon just should have had an evolution right away um suey and quillfish quillfish needed this right but I still kind of don't care. It doesn't really make me feel anything. It's a quillfish, but they made it purple-ish. And they made its tail look different. And now it's dark type. I don't care. So that's all I have to say. But quillfish did deserve it and did need it. So its existence puts it in C tier. Everything else about it keeps it from going up. Uh, Sneasel. Sneasel is odd. I think the fact that it doesn't have fingers, they are just claws. Bit weird. Like, even dogs have toes, and then claws come out of the toes. But Sneasel is just claws, no fingers. Very weird, but, you know, it's a, it's a well-done Pokemon. The feather is always a nice touch. The gender difference... One of them, I can't remember which one it is, I think the female has the smaller feather. That one doesn't work as well, but... It's still, the feather's cool. Uh, Ice Dark is not a good typing, but it's a fun one at least. Uh, that's all I have to say about that one, really. Hound Dower. 
it's okay. It's based off one of my favorite dogs, uh, slash my favorite dog, Doberman. Doberman is the best dog, but something about it just doesn't feel right. I think it's the forehead skull, because it's obviously, the whole point of these is to simulate bones. Like That's the ribs, that's the skull, these are, I don't know, the fucking ankle. But basically, it just looks like a dog wearing a stupid hat. Uh, and also, it's just really weirdly built. Like, the scaling of its, the proportioning of its body, probably accurate, but it just feels off. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, I'll I'll make I'll try and skip the mega before I do the final evolution, and then I'll do the mega. So Hound Doom, a tier. I love Hound Doom. The horns instead of ears. I think it could have done with ears still, but the the ribs having six or uh, three there is better than two. It seems more right. This makes it seem more like an anklet than you know a weird sock. Uh, I just, it's just better in my eyes. There's the 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 mouth, the snout, uh, fits on the face better, and the fucking pitchfork tail. Oh, it's not a pitchfork. It's like a, it's like the devil tail. You know what I'm talking about. The arrow tail. Point is, is lovely and dark fire type. It's just, it's a badass type. I'll be honest. I mean, I can't get over that. Mega Houndoom, also a tier. I'm gonna say the deck entries horrifying. But the Pokemon design, oh my god, it looks like Cerberus. As that's a Hellhound. It's like Cerberus, but with only one head. That's a straight-up Hellhound. It's awesome, and again, my favorite dog, so I can't hate it. Um, Tyranitar. Tyranitar is definitely up there. Like, if you think, the more you think about it, it's brilliant. I love it. Because you can see, obviously it comes from Lavatar, but in the chest you can see Pupitar. That's good as hell. And then it turns into Godzilla. The tail, I think the tail's a bit weird, but the rest of it, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Mega Tyranitar. Uh, A tier as well, but I'm going to say less so. Just because the amount of spikes, uh, it's a bit overkill in my eyes. A little bit overkill at least. But other than that, it's a good Pokemon. I really like it. Um, Pugiana, a classic, a classic, but it's a bit ugly, so it has to go in B tier, uh, because while it is, like, you know, the starter route dog Pokemon of Gen 3, and I've used one on my team a lot, and it's awesome, it has a really good shiny, but other than that, it is kind of just a dog, and it is a little bit ugly, so B tier for that one. Uh, Mighty Yena, or Mighty Yena, I don't actually know, I think it's Mighty Yena, but Mighty Enna sounds better. So Mighty Enna. A tier. Uh, it just looks better. A bigger dog. But they they did add like the fur details. And the weirdly shaped ears. Uh, and obviously like the eyes are never really red on a dog. Unless you get certain dogs. But the hair detailing. And the colours and the patterns. Really do sort of move it away from just being a big dog. Like Arcanine. Arcanine gets a big mane and, like, tiger stripes to differentiate it from a dog. Mightyena doesn't get that much, but it does move it away. Uh, and it's just cool. It's weak, horribly weak, and it needs something. But A tier, just based on design and nostalgia for it that I have. Uh, Zigzagoon, Galarian Zigzagoon. Fucking love Galarian Zigzagoon. Funniest thing they could have done. They made it a member of Kiss. They made it shiny, look like rainbow vomit. It was awesome. Uh, I love Zigzagoon regular, so obviously this is awesome. Uh, they gave it more personality because regular Zigzagoon's personality is I'm an idiot. Uh, look at my eyes, they're going the wrong direction. Galarian Zigzagoon's personality is like lapdog with the energy of a thousand suns love it funny good color scheme great shiny could not get enough of it galarian linoon uh it doesn't work as like a cute thing but it does work as a scary thing because i mean look at it I, it is quite scary it's much scarier than regular linoon regular linoon not much going for it it doesn't have like the meme status slash cuteness of zigzagoon but this linoon does hold a candle to its own Zigzagoon, just because it's fucking scary. Look at it. Ugh. 
Uh, Nuzleaf, uh, he has nipples and ball sacks for knees. So uh, C tier for Nuzleaf, don't like it. Shift Tree, cool Pokemon. Dark Grass, not the greatest type. And also it's awfully weak. Uh, and it gets overshadowed 1 billion percent by Ludicolo. So yeah, not really a great Pokemon. But at least it's based off of a cool Japanese lore. Tengu, can't, can't hate the Tengu. Um, Sableye, S tier, because it stands for Sableye. Mega Sableye. I'm pretty sure I put it in A tier once. But it's also S tier, just because look at them. They're perfect. Rock-eating goblins that live in caves and have gems for eyes and for chest pieces. And also look at him, he's like a little dude. He's based off that one alien drawing, I can't remember what it was, but he's so cool, and I love him, and he's so awfully weak, uh, but he's just, oh, I just can't get enough of him. Based purely on design and personality, S tier. Nostalgia, double S tier, and the fact that he's purple and funny, triple S tier. Also, Mega Sable is a little cheeky bastard, so he gets S tier as well. Uh, Carvana, he's a bit odd. He's a bit odd. The more I'm thinking about it. C tier. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be in C tier. Just because his jaw, it looks like he's eating his own upper face. The The fact that he's like 50% or he's 33% blue, red and yellow. Perfect. Love that. However, he does look like he's eating his own upper jaw. It's a bit weird. It's C tier. But I do quite like it still. It's quite fun. Uh, Sharpedo. It's a classic Pokemon. You know, Hoenn, water dark type. Uh, it's just a shark. Uh, its eyes are in its gills. But it's so cool. It's so cool. I do love it. And also, Sharpedo, Sharpedo like uh, Jet from Pokemon Sun and Moon. That made me happy. Riding a Sharpedo. I was like, well, I'm riding a shark. Also, it's a torpedo. Um, but in the anime, it does keep saying pedo, uh, and they had to change that for obvious reasons. Other than that, I love him. Mega Sharpedo. Bit over the top, but again, he still looks badass. I mean, the yellow, uh, the yellow, like, being the energy of Mega Evolution, making the scars on its body emit a yellow light. Awesome. Uh, the fact that it turns into Arlong from One Piece, because uh, it's based off the Saw Shark or whatever it's called, but fuck yeah. I love it. It's just a bit much. If they got, if they like, if they like, dimmed it down a bit, it would probably be an S tier. But you know, it's a, it's a good mega. It makes sense. Uh, Absol, Absol itself, um, A tier, A tier. It's a lovely Pokemon. It's got a scythe coming out of its head, though. I think that might be my problem: is that the scythe coming out of its head doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's a cool Pokemon, and it's got a hell of a design going for it. The yin-yang stuff, nice. Mega Absol. That's how you make a Mega. I mean, the hair got longer, the horn made more sense, it grew wings for some reason, the legs didn't look so naked compared to the neck. This is a good Mega, and I will not take any Mega Absol slander. Uh, Haunchcrow. Up there with Murkrow. Again, they're both good Pokemon. Well designed. They just needed to be in the same gen, and they'd both probably be an S tier. I've never used one. I've never used one. I don't have any personal connection to it. But I like the scarf beard. I like that the hat progressed into, like, mobster hat. Uh, the red accents do add quite a bit as well. And it moves on from, like, the, the witchy wizard feel to more the gangster feel. Uh, and Murkrow still fits with the gangster feel because of the hat. But they work really well together. It's just a shame they weren't in the same generation. Uh, oh god, Gen 4 had a lot of dark types. How far into this am I? 20 minutes? Jesus Christ in hell. Um, okay. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll finish Gen 4 and then we'll, uh, we'll do... We'll start the next one. Uh, Stunky. He has ass face. Very unfortunate. He does have butt on his face. Uh, so yeah, uh, C tier for that. But also, I quite like the colours and skunks are a pretty fun animal. Skuntank. Uh, it causes you nothing but problems when you fight it. Because it's poison type and it learns flamethrower, the bastard. 
But other than that, it's just a skunk with a pretty decent design. Nothing horrible with it. It does still kind of have a butt face, but less to the extent that Stunky has a butt face. Spiritomb. Uh, I mean, it's the, the S tier. It's the Spiritomb tier. It's still the same light tier, but Spiritomb's in it. Spiritomb does lose points only because it took away my boy Sableye's only... Uh, my boy Sableye being the only Pokemon with no weakness. I was very happy with that. Uh, and then I found out Spiritomb existed, and I was like, you son of a bitch. Um, but then Fairy-type came along and fucked them both up anyway, so who cares? Um, Spiritomb's cool. Lots of lore. Strong Pokemon. Good typing. Uh, fucking radical design. I mean, the whole orb, like, floating about, like, floating in there. Good shiny. Not much to hate. Uh, Drapion. Uh, A-tier. A-tier. Um... I know lots of people say, oh, the arms coming out of the ears are pretty fucking weird. And yeah, it is pretty fucking weird. But, you know, Houndoom doesn't even have ears. Get over it. <laughs> it, it. You say it looks weird, and you say it feels weird, but people have tried moving it, and it just doesn't work. It works really well here, because it just makes him look like he can do a big swing and get you. He's cool, and he's purple, and that's all that matters to me. <laughs> uh, Weavile. Uh, I don't mind it. I've got a shiny one called Full Odds because I found it before I finished the game and I was really chuffed with that. Um, it's all right, but I don't really find myself caring too much about it. I know that in like competitive, it's quite important for one reason or another, but in game, it's just a nice dark type that moves real quick. Basically, you're just setting it up to get killed. You just got, you know, no one's really that careful in the campaign, so they don't really put much attention into it. Um, but yeah, that's why it's B tier. Darkrai. Fucking S tier, my boy. Oh, Darkrai is the best mythical Pokemon. Hell, it might even be the best legend, just in general. I love Darkrai, just because uh, it's black, it's red, and then it has that the white wisp hair. That's awesome. Also, like, the, the way it's built, it's got, like, a strong upper chest and, like, a little skirt thing going on here. The fingers being so pointy and, like, scary. It's a scary Pokemon. If they'd made it Ghost-type, we would have been just as okay with it. But they made it Dark-type, and it's still wicked. I love Darkrai, and I won't ever hate it. It's probably... It's definitely my favorite mythical and probably my favorite legend. So, yeah. Darkrai is S-tier, and if you argue with that, shut up. Um, but yeah, that's Gen 4 done. Gen 5 has a shitload, I've just realised. Gen 6 has some. Gen 7 has two. <laughs> Gen 7 has two. Gen 8 has a bunch. Uh, and then Gen 9 also has a bunch. So, we've got our work cut out for us. Uh, but yeah, that is it from me for this episode. There will be a second part soon enough. Don't worry, it is coming. But yeah. Thank you for watching. You're all very lovely and very nice. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.